with us mr hari krishnan mr hari krishnan completed his bachelor degree in philosophy from mg university kotayam kerala and he completed his msw from bharati darshan university tamil nadu additionally he has graduated the degree of advanced training in systemic practice and family therapy from institute of family therapy london united kingdom currently mr hari krishnan is working as a professional social worker with credon council london united kingdom he has a passion to practice social work with children and families mr hari krishnan has over two decades of professional experience in the field of teaching and field level social work practice during his professional engagement he served the organizations like Yuva Khetra Institute of Management Study Kerala Central University of Himachal Pradesh Midway Council Bromley Council Luisom Council and Croydon Council of United Kingdom He has been working in United Kingdom since 2014 for the development of children and empowerment of oppressed family Mr Hari Krishnan has the skill of family counseling case management systemic family therapy developing therapeutic behavior management strategy for children supervising social workers and many more mr hari krishnan has vast and diverse knowledge on social work professor out of his vast knowledge and experience today he will deliver on transnational social work on behalf of ganalok and all participants present in today lecture series once again i welcome mr hari krishnan and request to address the audience over to you sir thank you uh, thank you so much dr sahib uh, for inviting me uh, to to this uh, session today this afternoon thank you so much um uh, dr sahib can i please ask uh, can you hear me am i audible yeah 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 you are uh, audible yeah. so if in, for any reason if my uh, you know internet drops down or any technical difficulties please you know send me a whatsapp message so i will be able to know what's going on okay um good afternoon to everyone um i i can only see a couple of people's sort of you know names on the screen um so a warm welcome to um this afternoon's session uh, it's it's not a, it's not a big sort of you know academic session that we are actually going to be in i would really like this session to be an interactive more of a dialogue discourse kind of a thing um, because i'm not an academician um i'm 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 an individual social work practitioner who had all the upbringing all the education right up to masters in india um and you know i'm a dropout from uh, sort of phd program uh, from india so you can see that i am not a great academician <laughs> i i am i'm an individual social work practitioner so to say so um, my i'm going to share my experience my reflections and you know my perspectives on and my understanding of what is transnational social work um, you know uh, for, 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 from an individual point of view from, from an individual practitioner's point of view um yeah, dr sagar thank you so much for uh, giving me a, a, a really good introduction um and I, i know i don't deserve all those things um but thank you so much dr sagar and um a very big thanks to dr pradhan uh, my personal and professional mentor and guide who has helped me to get to the place where i am today um dr pradhan i know you are actually somewhere there uh, i can't see you but uh, you know i touch your feet and uh, you know I'll, i'll i'll start today's session with your blessings for the program okay and as i told as i told you um, today's session is not um, it's not uh, an academician's outlook on transnational practice social work practice uh, it is more of an individual kind of an experience sharing by um by someone like you you know who had all your all the upbringing all the growing up all the learning to do in india and um because i was not great uh, at finding job in india 
you know, to get a job in India is extremely difficult. Um, you have to be extremely competitive, uh, highly skilled and talented, um, and you need to have a touch of a, a touch of a luck to get a job in India. And I couldn't find. I tried for a couple of years to get a job in India as a good social worker, and I couldn't find. So I started looking for jobs elsewhere, um, and you know, luckily. I could find um, a job in the United Kingdom to practice as a social worker. So here I am today. Uh, so uh, let's actually start with a uh, little bit of an understanding of what is transnational social work practice. Okay, so the word, um, uh, Dr. Saif, if you can just move to the next slide, please. Yeah, it's so, okay. As you can see, the, the exploration about transnational social work practice actually, I don't mean to say this is the first use or this is exploration where it started. I would like to say that this is what has been documented in the history uh, you know, of social work practice in the last two, three decades. So there may have been people elsewhere in the globe, you know, uh, you know in some other part of the country where they may have used the term transnational social work, but may not be in English. Okay, so in English, in the American context, it was used by uh, James Midgley, and he actually used the term in two thousand and one. So you can see that this is quite relatively new um, sort of a, a term uh, and, and, and a phenomenon, uh, maybe a, 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 an offshoot of um, you know modern social work practice. And uh, as the term denotes, it is about social work practice going across the borders, you know, going past the nation's borders. Um, so that is transnational social work. Um, and definitely what you think next is uh, interconnectedness. Because um, I was able to get a job in the UK nearly, you know, if, uh, sort of a... Yeah, uh, like a 10 hour flight from where I was living to work and come here. It was only because there was some kind of connection between where I was living and where I'm working at the moment. So transnational social work practice happens only when there is interconnectedness. And interconnectedness um, is all about, you know, it's, a, it's between, you know, it's, bet it's about the global institutions and uh, and, and the movement of people movement of ideas movement of you know um, you know all that can be moved across borders and and that interconnectedness definitely influences our profession social work profession and our profession also influences this interconnection dr pradhan um, was the one who actually taught me about social capital and social capital is all about you know, interconnection, the connectivity. And at the moment, I'm sitting in my uh, room here today in England, in the southern part of England. I'm able to actually talk to you in real time. You know, you can see me, you can actually listen to my voice in real time. That is actually called interconnection in the proper sense. Why this this, this was possible? It is possible because, of, because the world has actually shrunk because of globalization. Dr. Sago, can you please move to the next slide, please? Yeah, so definitely that is where we are actually, you know, where we are actually going at the moment, globalization. Globalization has been a buzzword for how many years now? Um, you know, for nearly three, four decades at least. Um, globalization has shrunk the world it has widened our, you know, you know, uh, emotional and, you know, uh, sort of, you know, cognitive boundaries. It has, it has actually brought people together so that they can share um, their lives, so that they can share their ideas, understandings, you know, knowledge, um, information, everything, including wisdom. So globalization has actually a massive factor in 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 changing our lives in in the last two three decades especially in, in india post the uh, you know neoliberalization that happened following what happened in 1992 and we know what happened since then in our economy which is kind of 
impacting and influencing how we look, how we look at ourselves today, where we are in relation to development, in relation to science and technology, enhancements in relation to 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 feeling Indian, both in India and outside. You know, so um, globalization has changed our lives. It has changed our our day-to-day -day lives. It has changed our relationships. It has changed, uh, you know, multinational relationships. Globalization has actually influenced everything that is tangible in today's world. And in the in the last couple of years, we had the pandemic, you know, crippling our um, our Earth globe, and it has had its impact on how a globalized globalized uh, kind of civilization finding its way to connect to people virtually by digitalize, digitalizing itself, digitalizing the economy, digitalizing, uh, you know, social interactions, digitalizing everything. You know, there are pros and cons to it. That's a, that's a debate for another afternoon or evening. But globalization and the post-pandemic era digitalization has definitely, definitely, uh, you know, impacted on our life. It is still impacting as we are talking. You know, who thought back in 2015, we would be able to actually be in kind of a real time situation. I'm actually accessing Microsoft Teams on my mobile phone here because my laptop was not properly accessing Microsoft Teams. I'm able, I'm able to access and talk to you in real time on my mobile phone sharing in PowerPoint presentation because of the presentation. Um, and this, this is changing our lives today. And as you know, social work is a profession that is very much, uh, very much responsive, sensitive to what is happening outside. Why? Because the most important tool that a social worker uses is one's own self. And, and and ourselves, myself and yourself, you you cannot be you cannot be a static phenomenon. You change, you keep changing, you keep changing all the time. You get transformed all the time. You renew your positions. You revisit your convictions. You change your life pattern. You get transformed all the time as a person, as a husband. No? As a father, as a practitioner, as a professional, you know, you get transformed all the time. That is the reality of human life. And why transnational social work is influenced by this process and is influencing this process is because you and I, we use ourselves as the most important tool in our practice as social workers today. We do, you know, even before laptops came into play even before mobile phones came into play we we were social workers we may have called us you know different names different titles but we actually anyone who has used their self their understanding their ability to connect to people for the betterment of the other for the enhancement of the other was a social worker always and will always remain a social worker so why globalization and digitalization is impacting our profession today is because you and i are you know we are being influenced by globalization and digitalization so uh, but when you come back to understanding and looking at transnational practice uh, of you know transnational social work practice um, there are two different ways of looking at it um, and one is, especially, okay, let, 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 let us go to the next slide and then I will, I will explain. Dr. Sahu, please, next slide. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, you know, I can only talk about, uh, you know, India and UK because that is my evidence. I have never been doing, I have never practiced social work in any other country. So, you know, from my experience and I, what I have seen um, by being, and by working uh, as, a, as, a, as a professional social worker in the UK, I look at transnational social work practice from two different point, point of views. One, professional social workers, qualified, experienced professional social workers 
coming to the UK to practice their social work. That is one. Two, a number of people migrate to the UK every year, every day. People do come to this country for studies, for higher studies, for making a living, for asylum seeking, as refugees, as high level professionals, as businessmen. People do migrate to UK for various reasons. And their migration happens with a lot of struggles and challenges at the same time. And opportunities as well, definitely, definitely. But mostly, when you come to, a, when you go to a different country and you leave your motherland, you leave your culture, you leave all your belongings, and you go to another country and you're bombarded with everything that is new. You know, you might be driving on the different side of the road. You might, you may not understand why people don't get, you know, married in this new society. Why there are so many, you know, um, individual single parents, you know, bringing up children in this country, in this society. So, you know, migration comes with a lot of challenges, a lot of problems to solve, a lot of um, struggles to go through, but also opportunities as well. So, the migrant people coming into the UK, they influence the social work practice in the UK. And their realities also redefine social work practice in the UK. So transnational social work practice, as I understand it, I, I experience, I look at it from two different points of view. One, from a practitioner who left India to come to the UK and practice social work. One, that is one way of looking at it. And, and, and I, I, I influence in my own way the way social work is being practiced within my context as a social worker in the UK. One. Two, all the social workers in the UK, including by British or by you know, migrant social workers in the UK, are being influenced by people who are coming into the country. So you're looking at two, two different populations. One is social workers who have been who have experience and who have graduated from other country coming into the UK to people coming into the UK and influencing the profession as a social worker. So you can see it, it is on the rise in the UK. In 2019, uh, there was, you know, th there were only 611 applications uh, from abroad to Social Work England, which is the regulatory body. To, to practice as social workers in the UK. That has gone, that has, you know, that has gone up to 1,684 in 2021-22 period. And that is a massive, massive increase. And that is almost 175% increase in the number of, you know, applications going to the Social Work England regulatory body. And, and mostly this, you know, the, the, these are the database that I actually you know, have taken from, from the sources here. And practitioners, you know, those who have been applying to Social Work England recently are from Zimbabwe, India, and South Africa, and, and so on and so forth. You know, I work in a, I work in a London uh, council at the moment. And, um, you know, I, I just think about my workplace. And I have my colleagues from Nigeria, from Ghana, from... South Africa, from uh, Romania, from Canada, from New Zealand, from Australia, from Bangladesh. Definitely, Indians are there. Indian social workers are definitely there. Every, it is so multicultural that you really have to be um, keeping in mind that you are talking to someone who may not understand your accent, who may not understand your ideas. So, keeping all these things in mind and trying to practice social work. Is, is a big task, but that comes with a lot of reward as well. So, so I, I just mean to say, social work, transnational social work in the UK context have, can be looked at from two different point of view. One, from the point of view of migrant social workers, and also from the point of view of migrant population in, at large coming to the country. Um, Dr. Sarva, next slide, please. So when, when, uh, a migrant a social worker or any social work come to the UK, uh, you know, they they influence the society by working with, you know, uh, you know, you know, these 
this strata of population or these, you know, subcategories of population here, society here. You know, there are social workers working with adolescents. There are social workers working with, uh, you know, adults, um, you know, working with, you know, people who have a misuse problem of substances, including drugs and alcohol, um, you know, uh, and and there are social workers who will be working, who are working with, um, you know, people who experience mental health difficulties. Um, uh, and, 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 you know, there are social workers who are working with older adults, elderly population. And, and um, there are social workers who are working with, um, you know, people with disabilities, both children with disabilities and adults with disabilities. Um, and, and there are social workers who are working with children and family as well. And see, th these are major, broader areas of social work practice in the UK. I, I don't mean to claim that this is an exclusive list. This is not comprehensive because social work, as you know, is ever enhancing, ever expanding profession because we practice our social workers by responding to the reality of human beings outside there, human lives outside there. Whatever is changing with, with, with human lives in the society, social work will have a response to that. And that will be a specialization of social work, definitely. Um, and nowadays, you know, um, there are, uh, you know, organizations in the UK bringing up uh, a new kind of social work, which is social work with uh, unaccompanied asylum seeking minors in the country. So children being trafficked for various reasons into the UK, uh, they, they form a big part of, you know, a, a significant part of, of, of the children that we work with, uh, especially in the Southeast. And, and, and there is a specialization actually being formed at the moment, probably being kind of, you know, in, in the pipeline. And, and there are practitioners who are specializing in that. So social work is, is, is a very live profession. It keeps reviewing itself. It keeps reshaping itself. It, ke it keeps evolving. It keeps evolving with, with you and me. It, it keeps evolving with the society. That's what we do. Um, so, Dr. Sahid, next slide. You, we'll be switching, you know, between these two slides, and I, I don't want to go into the details of these slides. You can actually, you have, you all have the slides. I would rather like to actually keep talking about the social work practice. Um, if anyone has any, any any questions for me, please raise a hand. Um, you know, I'm more than happy to actually, uh, you know, keep discussing. Uh, I'm moving on to the next slide. I just want to do this just to explain how um, transnational social work uh, can be or is practiced by way of super specialization. Because this is how social work is practiced in the UK. And this is just an example of, um, you know, super specialization within the children and family social work in the UK. You know, I keep referring, sorry, I keep referring to UK because I live in the UK and I work in the UK and I don't know anything about the other parts of the world other than India. So, um, and I try to explain, and I try to look at the transnational scenario from a UK context, being an Indian social worker in the UK. So in the UK, because social work practitioners who are practicing within the statutory sector have a statutory responsibility to make sure the welfare and the safety of the service users that they work with on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, is kept up, you know, is kept, is very well intact for all of them. So safety, welfare, well-being, and development. These are the main four things that every social individual social worker has to keep in mind when they work. And you know, I'm trying to go deep into the sub-specializations within children and family social work, because that is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis here in this country. So within children and family social work, and if you actually get a job in the UK and you come to the UK, these are the major sort of eight, nine different super-specializations that you will be working. And to understand each specialization I think, you, I think you should you unless you are an intelligent you know super smart person you need at least three to six months 
of hands-on practice to understand how children's duty team carries out their individual day-to-day tasks. How an out of our OOH, sorry, I have used some acronyms there. OOH is out of hours. EDT is emergency duty team. So practice as a no out of hours or emergency duty team social worker, that is another specialization. To work in the early health team, that is another specialization. So all these categories here that come within the children and family social work, it has its own modules, has its own timescales, has its own practice modules, has its own uh, its own expected outcomes and, and intervention modules as well. And I will be honest, I know just about number five and number eight. And I don't know even, I don't anything know about the second part of number eight, which is adoption. I haven't done adoption. I have only done number five, which is child in need and child protection. And I have only done fostering. So I have, I only know about three different, three specializations within children and family social work. And, and that is enough for me because that in itself is a lot for me to explore. Um, Dr. Sohu, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, sorry, I think the next slide is says how social work is being practiced daily in the UK. The, go to the previous slide, please. Number eight. Go to number eight, please. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So um, as you can see, as you can see, um, when when we practice social work on a day to day basis. These are the major things that I keep in mind, okay? Um, because social work in the UK is a statutory, kind of we work within the statutory public sector, we are backed by legal framework. As, as, as in India, we have Juvenile Justice Act in India to back you when you work with young people. Similarly, you know, there are acts and legal, you know, documents that you have to keep in mind when you practice on a day-to-day -day basis. So you have to keep in mind what are the laws and regulations and guidances. You have to keep in mind the practice modules. So there are various types of practice modules for individual day-to-day -day practice, and that differs from one organization to the other. It could be science or safety with one organization and in a systemic practice with the other. And then there is, you have to keep in mind relational and humanistic side or humanitarian side of your individual day-to-day -day practice. This is where I find um, in Indian social workers excel, you know, uh, in, in most of the time. And I don't mean to say we are not good in the other parts. We are, we, are, we are definitely good in other parts as well. But when it comes to relational, humanitarian social work practice, we are, uh, I have seen Indian social workers excelling very well in, in, in that regard because we, because we grow up in a multicultural, um, multilinguistic, you know, multi religious society, which is India. You know, India is so diverse that when, you know, I, I, I'm from Kerala and I was doing PhD in Himachal Pradesh and I used to travel by Himasagar Express from from where I was living to Patangur and then catch a bus from Patangur to Dharamshala. That was a crisscrossing of going, the train going through so many, so many states. And when the train passes from one state to the other, you actually have people speaking different languages, people eating different food, different, you know, dress code and so on and so forth. But one thing that held us together, keeping us together, holding us together is the fact that we are Indians. And Similarly, it was easy for me to understand, okay, even if I'm talking to a black Caribbean person or a white British person or someone from, uh, from you know, from down under, from Australia, I'm able to connect to them. Despite all the differences, I'm able to connect to them and I'm able to relate to them because of my, you know, my experience of living and growing up in India, which is very, very diverse. And the other thing that we do on a day to day basis is needs assessment. And needs assessment is the crux of, of 
individual social work practice, I would say, um, because from one hour to the other, from one client to the other, the needs do change. And as a social worker, you keep assessing their needs. And these needs could be their welfare needs, could be their safety needs, could be a development need, could be an empowerment need, but you keep assessing the need. And then accordingly, you, you, you adopt an approach which could be solution-focused or strength-based approach. And at the end of the day, or after one intervention, then you keep reflecting about, uh, you know, how have you intervened with that particular person or with that family? And, 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 and you know, how you share your experience in your team um, with your manager. So that reflective aspect is also there. So these are some of the some of the elements of individual social work practice as it is done daily in the UK. Um, please go to the next slide, Dr. Sahu, please. So I just want to actually share this slide with you just to show how well transnational social work practice can be effectively practiced by anyone, anyone. You know, the fact that you have had all your upbringing, all your growing up, all your education in India doesn't limit you as, as an individual practitioner. You can go to Africa and you can practice social work. You can go to Europe and you can practice social work. You can go to Australia, America, North America, South America. You can go to Russia. You can go anywhere and practice social work because the values that we uphold, the persons that we connect, the, the individuals that we relate on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, they have similar needs. They have similar problems that they go through. And, and because we are able to relate to them on a day-to-day -day basis, and because we are able to actually be with them on their journey, which could be really, really tough, really, really tough, but we can, transnational social work practice is possible for anyone. Here is a beautiful example of Ms. Vidya Baiju, who was awarded in 2017, Social Work of the Year in the UK Award. And, and what does she say about her practice? This is something that I really like all of you to pay attention to. This is what she says. Vidya is so passionate about the service uses that she helps. She's adamant that direct interaction with service users is the priority, is the priority. And that is actually something I really want to actually all of you to think about because when I had my, when I was doing master's in social work, I felt more like I was being trained to supervise a lot of things that could be going on, running an office, or, you know, it was more about, it was more about uh, sort of, a, you know, preparing everything in preparing a project work, you know, running a project, implementing a project, reviewing a project, you know, preparing annual review reports. And it, it, it meant more like a managerial kind of entrepreneurial thing, but across the globe, when you think about transnational social work practice, this is the core of transnational social work practice, your interaction with the person that you meet on a day-to-day -day basis. In the UK, for example, you know, when you practice as a, you know, when you practice as a social worker, you will be allocated cases, you know, casework, the traditional term, that is where it stems from. So you will be allocated cases. Cases could be, if you're a, if you're a child a social worker, you may have 10 to 25 children that you will be working with. If you are an adult social worker, you may have 12, 13, 14, 15, 20, 23 adults you will be working with. And you have statutory responsibility for their safety, welfare, development, and empowerment. You will have to take necessary actions and liaise with them, liaise with the other professionals to make sure your service user has the best outcome in relation to their safety, in relation to their development, empowerment, and well-being and welfare. So th this, this is the core of transnational social practice. Your interaction with your individual client is the is the core. That is the most significant part of of transnational social work practice, I would say. Because to, to manage, to run, to implement a project, you, you don't need this, you know, wide variety of skills. 
you don't need it. You don't need it. But to be able to be effective in person to person interaction uh, and to be able to understand the legality behind your practice, in you know, to be able to understand what is it that you are trying to help your individual client who may be experiencing difficulties with substance misuse, how do you take them with you on that journey from being an addict to alcohol and drugs, helping them understand, okay, there are different ways of coping with stress in your life. You don't really have to keep drinking and taking drugs to respond to stress in your life. There are different ways of responding and managing stress in your life. Come on, you can do it. Think about something else. And when you are able to do that, and when you're able to actually help the client to sustain the positive progress you know, for a significant period of time, and then you report back to you know, the, the, the agency or the organization you're working, that is actually valued as effective individual social work practice. And this is where social work is like you and me. Vidya had all her, all her education in India. She used to, she, she's from Kerala, but she was actually um, she had all her education in Nagpur and she was working in Delhi, resettlement colonies. And then she migrated to the UK because her husband had a job and she came to the UK to join the family. And she got a job to work in, 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 the, in the children's family first and then in adult social work later. So this is quite possible because this is what is being valued in transnational real social work practice today. Dr. Sarhu? Next slide, please. Okay, when you think about transnational social work practice, what makes us possible? Or, oh, you know, from a strength based point of view, you know, these are the things that I can share from my experience. Okay, these are the things that, that did help me in to actually to keep moving uh, ahead. You know, one, you have to be extremely resilient when you when you when you go to a different society when you go to a different country even when you you know within india when you if you're from tamil nadu and if you go and work in rajasthan and if you're from himachal if you go and work from if you're a social worker from himachal pradesh and you go and work in odisha you know things are different people talk different languages people eat different you know diet and people actually think differently they speak differently and they have different, you know, take on, on what is going on in their life on a day to day basis. So I'm not just saying transnational, even, you know, trans state social work within Indian context, within the Indian context, you will be able to think about. So when you actually leave your comfort zone of being in your own, being in your being at your own house, being with your own community people, being with the society that you have grown up. You know, being in the community where the same language is spoken, you know, leaving all those comfort zones and, and trying to move across and then you go to a different place and try to practice. That will definitely come with a, a lot of challenges for you. And how resilient you are to respond to the challenges and stresses in a positive way is going to be the crux of your identity as a transnational practitioner. The next one is relational practice, which I have already explained. Then the next one is respect for others, which goes in hand in hand with relational practice. The other thing that we need to keep in mind is knowledge about the legal framework. From country to country, the legal foundation and the framework uh, and the legal backdrop for you to actually work as, as an individual practitioner, it varies from country to country. It varies from, you know, it varies from you know country to country, society to society. That that definitely that definitely is going to be a big challenge for you to 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 read and understand the nuances of of the legal legality behind your practice as a social work practitioner. That is most important because from my experience, I can tell you because I don't speak the native accent here in the UK. You can see I speak. You know, uh, my accent is just Indian, very Indian. It hasn't changed at all. And people always tell me, uh, you always speak with a very heavy accent. That That's what they say. And I say, oh, yeah, I had all my had all my bringing in India. I'm just here for, 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 for doing some job. So, but 
what they value is your knowledge about the laws, the guidance, uh, guidelines, protocols, uh, practice guidelines, and the practice modules. Uh, and, and the ways to go, ways to actually maneuver your interaction with your service user or client. So, and, and again, in addition to knowledge about the legal framework, knowledge about the cultural practices is also massively important. You know, I don't have to explain on that because in India, we experience that on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, in, you know, India is very, you know, multicultural in various ways. And we, we, we have learned to adapt to that situation, that reality very well. The other thing is communication, which is both written and verbal or spoken. Um, this, I think this is actually a, a major kind of a difference between how social work is being practiced in the subcontinent and maybe in other parts of the West, especially Western world. Um, they expect you to be able to record everything on a day-to-day -day basis. Any interaction that you have had, they, they expect you to record it. They expect you to actually write down or type it and put it on the system as per the case guidelines. So your communication, which is both written and verbal, is very important. And, and multicultural awareness, which, which I have already explained. And the other aspect is analytical skills. This is something that I have seen in addition to relational practice. I have seen a lot of Indian social workers, especially, you know, uh, almost all of them, you know, almost all the social workers in the UK, I have seen that they process extremely high, uh, you know, level of skills. And it, it comes from, you know, talking about, you know, just sharing my experience, it comes from, it comes from the logical mind that every, every Indian process, especially, I'm just talking about myself. I'm not, I don't mean to say others don't have it, but I'm just talking, I'm just talking about myself. So I think it was some of this input that every Indian is, you know, is logical. So um, that analytical skill, that, that, that is actually an important part in understanding the new, identifying um, the uh, sort of, you know, intervention, you know, intervention, this and going about being on a day to day basis as per within the legal frame as per the practice guidelines and a passion for profession. Because um, when you look at what you have lost, uh, if you are a individual practitioner who have gone to another country and what you have lost and what you're gaining, you need to have a passion for the profession. Otherwise you might be you might lose direction and orientation and i have seen this you know with some of my some of my friends uh, you know here in the uk who are indian you know who have had all the education in, in india and because they lack they didn't have a good level of passion for the profession they have actually turned some turned to something else uh, so these are the transferable skills that every every everyone who are actually um, you know, attending this session today, you have all this in, in abundance with you. You have the potential within, you know, with you. And nothing is going to be in your way if you are planning to do transnational social practice. You can go to Australia, you can go to Africa, you can go to Russia, any part of the world you can go and you can practice if you have these transferable skills in you. And all of us, you know, I'm quite, I'm quite confident that everyone who is actually listening to, you know, uh, is part of this session today, this afternoon, you have this in an abundance. And th this is what is needed for, for transnational social work practice. These are the transferable skills that you have. I had it, and therefore, you know, there is no doubt you will have it. Uh, next slide, please, Dr. Sahu. Um, okay, this is no, it's it's not a major, it's not a major slide. I, I I'm not going to expand on that. It is just a factual information. You most of you may already know it, but I I will I just leave the slide there. But I would like to say something else, but in relation to this slide, okay. 
And that's why I thought of sharing this slide with me today. So this is about if you would like to give it a go in a factory social work in the UK. You know, these are the things that you can keep in mind. Okay, I'm not going to expand on that, but I would like to say something else, which is about the standardization of, of the profession, of our profession. I I can say, you know, when I was when I did where I did my master's in social work, um, in our batch we had 28, um, you know, uh, 28. 28, uh, you know, students doing masters. And uh, I was not the best one in the class. I swear, I was not the best one at all. <laughs> there, there were so many things, so many individual practitioners who were doing, who were actually directly involved in the grassroots level, social activism and social work, even when they were doing masters in social work. In, in the college that I was doing, I did my masters in social work. And I just, I just, I just look at them, and it, and I just, I just say, you know, why, why, why is it that, you know, that that level of high quality human capital is just being left without any standardization, without any, 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 any support, without any professional support to actually to enhance their identity as an individual social work practitioner in, in India, why is it happening? Why is it not standardized? I feel so strongly about it. I, I'm very passionate about it because, um, because, because we as individual social work practitioners, we do not take responsibility for standardizing ourselves and we are leaving ourselves, we are leaving ourselves to actually go through that individual, that crisis of you know that, that, that professional identity crisis. That's what I would like to say. That's what I would like to say. See, in this country, uh, because I, because my registration is regulated by the organization called Social Work England. You can Google and find it. So, so my, uh, I'm registered with Social Work England for my practice. So I need to have that registration number with me all the time. And that is the evidence that I'm I'm a qualified registered practitioner in the UK. Without that, you cannot practice social work in the UK. So once you have that, you are part of the multidisciplinary team. So if you work in in the hospitals, in in the clinical setting, medical setting, and if you're a practitioner, you will be advising the doctors will come and ask your advice. If you practice within the court setting. You will be going to court. You will be arguing for the sake, for, for the benefit of your client at par with, with the solicitors and barristers. You, you will be, you, in any multidisciplinary team, you will have equal, equal footing on with any professionals in the country. That gives you confidence. That gives you a high level of confidence to be able to confidently, uh, you know, effectively perform and everyone feel happy about being an individual social work practitioner. Why? Because it is standardized. I understand there are shortcomings for standardizing the profession, but standardizing the profession is the is the foundation foundation to make you feel to make you feel how happy, how proud you are, how comfortable you are in introducing yourself as a social worker. Uh, you know, to other professionals. So um, I sincerely hope um, with the right, uh, you know, leadership and, you know, mentors that we have with the senior social work, uh, you know, practitioners in India, they will, take, they will take some, you know, steps to standardize our profession. Because I think it is, it is, it is a professional negligence and crime on our part to actually know to standardize and, and, and have our own self regulating bodies to, 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 to boost the professional standards. Because if you don't do that, we will be we will we will be wasting a high volume of multi-talented, highly capacitated human capital uh, in the form of social work practitioners in India. Um, Dr. Sagar, next slide please. Just to sum up, um, you know, this is how we started our session. 
by explaining in simple terms what is transnational social work practice. You know, we looked at uh, interconnectivity or interconnectedness, interconnectedness of global institutions, the movement of people, movement of resources, movement of ideas and ideas back and forth, crisscrossing and across the state, nation state borders, inner boundaries. And, and, and that reality is there because of the globalization and it is being enhanced by the post pandemic digitalization and how this reality in itself is influencing and changing human lives the same way, the same proportion, it is redefining, it is helping social work profession reinvent uh, itself and, 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 and social work also also influences the same process social work individual social work practitioners influence the process of um you know migration you know transmigration in they influence the process of you know how this how this you know um exchange of ideas take place between two nations so this process is actually a two-way process it's like a dual carriageway there are you know you know vehicles passing in both directions and our, our our social work profession is influenced by the process and you know is influencing this process and you and i we are witnessing it we are part of it and and that gives you that that gives us a wide range of options to think think about your own practice because nothing is actually going to be standing in your way when you actually when you are determined to practice uh, professional social work in your capacity as an individual practitioner wherever you are you know maybe after 40 50 years who knows you know we might be going to the to 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 to, to other planets we might be going to mars we might be going elsewhere maybe interplanetary but you know what wherever human beings are social workers will be needed because people the way they are destined to be the way they are made up they need they need they, they need someone to be with them to help them understand this is what they are i i can understand myself only when i am in the society if i am if i am just the only person living on this earth i don't really i don't really have to understand myself and i will not have an identity our identity comes from interconnectivity our identity it comes from that and if interconnectivity is the source of your identity, my identity, your identity, definitely society will be there. Society will be there. That will be constituted of human beings wherever we are and social workers will be needed. So we are talking about transnational social work practice today. Who knows? You might be talking about interplanetary social work after 50 years. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. I, I like to talk, and I just sp spoke without any without any stop. I, I'm really sorry. I don't know if anyone had any questions or any anything to add, or you know, uh, you know, anything, you know, any anything, any comments, you know, the things that I can make things better, you know, for improvement. I welcome all of you to actually share, say something, or put something in the chat box, or, or email, uh, or any questions, Doctor Sahur, please. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. Actually, very rightly you told. Actually, uh, standardization is the key to, to introduce our, our profession. And to be recognized as a professional social worker, we need to have a standard framework, which we all professional social workers should focus on. And in, the, in a country like India, when Everybody claims to be a social worker. To be to become a professional social worker, we need to standardize ourselves so that other can identify us and we can make distinction between no simple social social work and professional social work. Thank you once again for this beautiful delivery, and I hope uh, no, I am sure definitely. All the participants uh, uh, have been benefited from, from this talk. 
and definitely they will try for the standardization of our profession in india thank you once again thank you so much now i request uh, the, the participants uh, if you have any question any doubt anything you can uh, raise your hand and ask yeah i have one question that so good Please evening introduce. good evening everyone uh, myself saroj kumar rath hello hi saroj uh, hello sir good evening sir uh, actually uh, i just want to this yes, hari oh, no, no hari sir. okay hari <laughs> okay hari uh, so uh, i have one question that uh, uh before uh, before we move on to real time uh, field uh, that is now we are in studying first semester of msw so okay. after completing our course so what are the steps that we must to uh, follow uh, before entering into professional field uh, in social work uh, that uh, where we have to start and what are the factors what are the points uh, that we have to consider first to make a standard framework Well, actually, I would like that's a really good question. Okay, Saroj, I can see that you are a you you are a, you you are a fantastic social worker in the make. Okay, this is not this is not a first year uh, you know social MSW uh, question. This is actually a question for all of us. See, if I am in your place, what I would do if I am very serious about my profession as social so as a social worker, I will definitely find ways to do some voluntary work, and and I will definitely try to practice what I learn. in my class because that you can do see if you're doing if you're doing chemical engineering you wouldn't be able to do that on a day to day basis you will have to actually go to the lab and do chemical engineering uh, experiments but the beauty of msw is that you can you can try it you can experiment it when you are a student and with the guidance with your field field work coordinator or you have try to do some voluntary work at least for a couple of hours every week every week and document it and try to try to try to uh, you know collate and see what you learn in the classroom is 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 actually is valid in your in your experience or if you, if you think it is not valid why is that not valid because saroj i would like to say so in social work practice we keep reviewing every time and if you don't review if you don't criticize yourself if you don't revisit what you have learned you are not a good social worker so this is where i would start if i am in your place i would find some i would some find some ways to do some voluntary work in the field that i would like to actually uh, build my career okay if i am going to be in corporate social responsibility i will try to find something there if i am going to be in medical setting i will try to find something there so i will think of, i will have a clear vision of where i am going to be in 10 years time and i will start doing some voluntary work to see if you have the right skills and if you are learning the right thing in your class that will be that, that's what i would do to start with the other thing is um you know uh, make use of all the platforms to read and 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 understand in depth because in social work especially if you have any plans to actually do some kind of transnational social work practice what you write is the evidence for what you have done so learn to write down in the proper way that's what i would like to say try to do some voluntary work you know compare it with what you have learned to see if if it is valid or if it has any kind of relatability try to do that and try to document in the proper way because that's what you need that is the evidence that you will have when you go go to a different place and try to practice I don't know if I have answered you. If I have confused you <laughs> more, uh, Saraj, what do you think? No, no. Uh, I got uh, I got your point here uh, because uh, as I am I am not entered in the practical field, so I thought that uh, your approach, the way of your approach, and the the way of your suggestion uh, is uh, quite applicable, and uh, it must applicable to me. Uh, so I will try to I will try to it in document form. Uh, whenever i i will do something voluntary work so it will uh, not only help to me but also it will create a vision to uh, in future also so what were the yeah good luck good luck sir yeah. thank you thank you thank you so much good any any other question 
सर आय एम हृदय फ्रॉम नीस आय एम सेकंड इयर स्टुडंट एम एस डब्ल्यू सर नाव आफ्टर माय एम एस डब्ल्यू हाव कॅन आय पर्स्यू माय हायर स्टडीज इन अब्रोड higher studies in abroad these days is not a big thing uh, where they you know you find out uh, you, you just just go on to the website of any universities that you want to do higher studies and say for, say for example okay in the uk they do have september intake and february intake so most of the universities so um and uh, you know most of the time it takes nearly 5 6 to 6 months to process your application your eligibility documents and so on so just go on to the website and and do the application i would rather not rely on any agencies uh, you know who facilitate higher studies abroad i wouldn't do that i will just focus i will just contact um, you know the universities directly um, you know you know directly so just go on to the website um, and 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 to start process there and there are so many so many um, scholarships and fellowships available for uh, you know deserving you know aspirant social workers there there are plenty of them there um and i'm quite sure i have seen so many uh, social work blogs in india uh, sharing this kind of information and i think if dr sahar has any of them please do share with her there but really that's a really good point you are making it's good it's good to know that you are thinking about some higher studies Uh, but can i just tell you one thing um you know i, I think at least before like uh, you know in the uk if you wanted to practice as a social worker the mandatory requirement was that you need to have a diploma in social work it then they, they they don't they don't they don't demand that you need to have master in social work in the uk okay you know even if you have a degree in social work that's enough that's enough so but when you think about doing higher studies outside be prepared for uh, be prepared for what you are actually aiming okay you need to have clarity about what you are going to do when you go for higher studies outside if it is post doctor fellowship you know have some clarity about what you are going to do um and and take it from there it's it's okay uh-huh. dinesh uh-huh. 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 एलिजिबिलिटी क्राइटेरिया डिफर फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी इन द यू के if you go for some very good universities you need to evidence that you have uh, made some preliminary studies and produced some good research papers and w- when you do that you know you will be able to connect with some big groups online say for example i was doing phd i didn't complete my phd sorry for that um and i and my theoretical framework was a bourdieuian um you know capital triad that was my theoretical framework and i was actually reading a lot i was actually following a lot of you know international uh, groups study groups doing about the european analysis of social uh, you know capital economic capital and and uh, and things like that and they and and the, if you follow the study groups of your area of specialization you will be able to meet some very good um you know uh, guides there Uh, then you get in touch with them you keep the discourse going on um and then you know when you when you when you create a research guide individually in the study group that is a good platform for you that thinking about doing phd outside i can only say what i have done here there i don't know if it is the right answer sorry if anyone knows the right answer please welcome it's <laughs> okay thanks yeah uh, uh sorry uh, i have one more question yes yes hello am i audible yeah yes, sir i can hear you yeah uh, so uh, so can i uh, can i make a career in uh, msw uh, in india or uh, uh, we have to uh, means i have to go uh, abroad 
uh, for it uh, as you said that you moved to london after searching jobs in india so uh, uh, can i possible can it is it possible to make a career uh, in msw social work in india or uh, saroj please share your experience good. yes yes that, that, that's a good question <laughs> you know one of the slides was about um vidya byju vidya who was actually awarded social worker of the year in the uk in 2017 and what do you think what, what, what do you think is the answer to your question because i don't have any clarity uh, that they asked it's possible it is possible saroj it is possible it's very much possible you have you have you know you know you have vidya who actually was like you you know who had all the living all the growing up and all the learning and education and, and the qualification in the in, in india and then she came to the uk and she started practicing social work and she was awarded social work of the year as a big award uh you know uh, you know so it's quite possible it's all about what you want in your life and you have a clarity about how to achieve that those are the two things that you need you can practice social work anywhere it's not just uk anywhere so so in india it is possible to make a long career of course of course of course you can of course you can but in india it you know india is a massive country with a, a massive population and therefore you know your chances of getting uh, a good job is very minimal because that is distributed across the population um so uh, yeah to get a job it's just like think about iit entrance you know <laughs> lakhs yeah. of lakhs and lakhs of uh, you know students right you know right uh, entrance and how many how many crack iit it's not the, it's they just fall behind by 0.0001 percentage and they don't make it does that mean that they're not good enough no it's, it 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 show it evidences the level of competition in, in india for good positions and good even good education so in that way i have to yeah so i have to be one among others for example right yeah yeah just just have clarity about what you want to do okay if you want to get a job in the america like in the us or in australia as a social worker or even in india do, what do you want to do when it comes to india you will be working mostly in the non regulated kind of social work practice which gives you a lot of freedom to practice to test to implement and and and, and experiment what you want to do um in in india you have that you have that freedom but not in the other countries because here it is very much regimented practice okay so that is that is the so both come with different challenges and different opportunities prospects so you need to, you need to pick your choice um yeah just keep reading keep thinking and keep planning that's what i would like to say thanks thanks yep Uh, may I have a question, please? Uh, just, just one thing. Sorry, um, Jai Sri. Just one, uh, just one thing to say. Um, I, I don't speak Hindi because uh, I didn't do really well in my school. Um, so anyone, I, I understand Hindi, but it's not that I wouldn't be able to communicate in Hindi. Okay. So anyone who can speak Hindi, don't, don't, please don't say, don't think, you know, silently, that, thinking that you can't speak English. Okay. Any language. hindi or odia or any language you know you are more than welcome dr sahu will help me jay sri please uh, go ahead hi uh, myself dr jay sri i am an assistant professor in assam central university uh, yeah, it's hi. a nice insightful uh, session from uh, hari ji uh, but uh, i i believe that i also have some uh, like uh, queries that i want to address from you this is basically for our students who want to uh, see their career in uh, uk or maybe in other uh, countries other than india so how they have to start their career uh, and i have i i'm asking for uk because uh, like my husband stays there so i am quite familiar with it uh, so that's why i'm asking that like if our students wants to start after their masters how they will uh, they have to start uh, that if they want to see them in any of the countries either in europe either in uk or in usa so what is your suggestion uh, my suggestion would be um 
see uh, have a clear have a some clear understanding about um, the different categories of social work practices in the country that you want to go to or your students want to go to if it is australia you know in australia you will be, oh some parts of parts of australia you will be working mostly with indigenous you know uh, people there uh, and for their empowerment and development so your your modules you, you, your skills your strategies will be different similarly if you're coming to the uk then you should know your specialization and you need to pick that specialization well in advance i would say like three four years in advance and because in india we don't have a regulated uh, a track for evidencing your career um career growth or your potential potential you need to build the case for yourself by volunteering or by gaining experience in in the similar category in india say for example um you know one of you know one of our uh, you know one of our students um in in the Hima, in himachal dr pradhan knows him very well um he was very focused on getting a uh, you know job in the uk and what he did and he was he was very clear about getting a job in children and family social work what he did he worked for salam balak trust in in delhi for 3 years and he applied directly and he got the job so this is what you need to do have clarity about the speciali specialization which is prevalent in that country be it new zealand australia africa <laughs> any any of the african countries or uk have a clear, have a clear understanding of, about the specialization prevalent specialization there and accordingly find a similar kind of context in india and gain the experience there because any international recruitment they 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 will demand at least 3 years of hands on experience in the specialization that you have chosen that's what they would ask uh thank okay. you but uh, i yes is is very insightful again uh, but i just want to ask you that is there any job portal where the students can get or where like the, any applicant can get uh, jobs or can see that what are the criteria that they are asking any job portal according to you especially for uk i am giving the example site the example of uk there are some there are some websites um that's a very specific question i don't know to be giving an answer like in like an overseas job consultant but i would i would i will leave those i will leave that information with dr sahu um outside the discussion and you can get it from dr sahu or get get my contact details from dr sahu um uh, uh, you know uh, ma'am and 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 i will be in touch okay because that's a very yeah, specific that would, fine. that would be fine because we also can conduct series of lectures with you <laughs> if our students want but it's, it's a very yeah. nice uh, opportunity for us also i really congratulate yeah. gyanamuk for organizing such a wonderful session thank you thank you thank you dr jayashree thank, thank you so much dr jayashree uh, welcome sir any any other question anybody is having okay okay i think uh, indeed we had a very uh, meaningful and insightful uh, discussion today and especially i am uh, very much thankful to mr hari krishan so to to accept our request and uh, Uh, besides all the odds you try to join through your mobile and, uh, thank you thank you so much and uh, we, we hope uh, in future we'll uh, ask you for more supports and uh, cooperation to establish the profession and to prepare a systematic framework to make make our profession different from others thank you so much thank you all participants for your information i am adding one more things uh, as you know this uh, uh, lecture series is uh, designed for a period of 5 months in every saturday at 6:30 pm we are having the renowned speakers like mr hari krishnan and many other people will be joining in different now session and they will be talking on different social issues 
and uh, fortunately we are also having one uh, lecture on uh, getting a job in abroad being a social worker how to get a job abroad uh, one speaker will be talking about on that particularly on that topic and for that reason i request all of you kindly circulate the uh, message among others and request all of them to join because uh, i think this is the need of the our to understand our profession to have uh, in depth knowledge at mr jay kishan uh, said first thing is we should understand our subject based on that we can know uh, fixed our goal and likewise we can know uh, we can we can uh, set our career whether it is in india or outside so once again thanking you all i request to request your participation with a greater number in the uh, coming future thank you so much yes. uh, yeah i have i have one request sir i have one request that uh, please share much. the ppt please share the ppt to yeah, yeah, our I have every every, uh, every uh, for every lecture i am sharing the ppt you can no find from your email Doctor Sahu, I will I will also send some some of the uh, you know some of the uh, reading materials that I have used for preparing the PPT. So you can share that with along with the sure, PPT. Sure, okay. sure. Sure. Uh, together I can share with them. Along with the PPT, I can also share the reading material. In in your registered email ID, you can get it from Ganalok mail ID. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. you.